thank you, Imad, and I'm all for the Amazilian right in North Africa because we are always categorized as Arabs and we are not, we are North African. So, um, I'm going to speak about Murtad under Sharia law. Murtad is the word for apostate, the Islamic word for of apostate. And it comes from the word Ridda, and Ridda is, is the uh, one of the six hudud of Allah. Hudud of Allah is the um, yeah, is the uh, limits of God. The hudud are the um, the uh, crimes against Islam, again uh, according to Sharia and, and according to Quran and Sunnah. It's um, Sorry, I'm just trying to have my PowerPoint. Sorry. Yes. So hudud are the uh, the limits, and there are the crimes in in uh, in Islam, and the the punishment of it. It's written in the Quran, and you cannot really um, argue about it because it's quite clear. It's in the Quran and it's in the Sunnah. So murtad is. Um, yes. Uh, these are the. I forgot to put the uh, another. These are the six um, uh, crimes: uh, the hudud, the limits, uh, zina, is adultery, uh, the, and the um, and the punishment for it, like public clashing, uh, um, homosexuality as well. It's a public clashing. Uh, it's a public execution for men, but for women there is no punishment. We are quite lucky. <laughs> Rami, uh, Rami Mohsanad, which is accusing someone from, uh, for adultery, uh, and it's public clashing as well. Sariqa uh, theft, it's amputation of body parts. Haraba, uh, it's um, stealing as well, but you are attacking uh, uh, the people. And Murtad is, the, is public execution according to Sharia. And I forgot to write drinking, it's slashing as well. Um, so, uh, can I have the next slide, please? So uh, in in the Quran, there's there's um, there's two uh, two parts of the Quran, and that's why people maybe see it as a uh, uh, contradicting itself. But there is uh, there is a history behind it. We have in the Quran is um, Surah, which is Makkiyah. Makkiyah came uh, during the preaching, the Dawah time, and it's a quite um, a more humane because. Muhammad at that time he still just started his uh, preaching for his new religion, and so it's it's um, he wants to gather people as much as he can, and so when when you talk about um, apostate in, in Shari Islamic Sharia, the moderate Muslim, they would say to you, no, you know, according to the Quran, it says that you have your religion, I have my religion, you believe whatever you want, I believe whatever I want. And that's it. There is no something that we are going to kill you. But um, so there, there is this uh, surah al, al, al kahf from Surah Al Kahf, which is Makkiyah. It's, it's before the uh, um, it's before the uh, before Muhammad went to Medina and uh, start constructing his uh, the Islamic state. So well, basically, it says it's. The truth is from your Lord. You, so you, whoever wills, let them believe, and whoever wills, let them disbelieve. And the Muslims stop there, and they don't mention the other part. Indeed, like basically, you are going to burn in hell, even though you are not going to believe in my religion. And God will um, will deal with you because Muhammad couldn't deal with you that time because he was in Mecca and he wasn't really strong, and so he always says that God will deal with you, we can't do anything, I am not a controller, I am just a messenger, and so on. But when he moves from Mecca to Medina and starts his Islamic, um, Islamic state, and he becomes very strong, and he has his army, he starts having a different view. So can we go to another? Um, so we have this um, uh, uh, Surah Al-Naida, which, which clearly uh, says who are going, who's against, uh, uh, who's fighting against Allah and Muhammad, they will be basically uh, crucified, killed, or exiled. And this is this, uh, this surah is uh, Madaniya, which is when he was powerful. So the thing that um, an apostate is, it has to be really killed because they are like a rotten uh, apple or whatever that will destroy the uh, society. Um, 
destroy the whole society and they are more dangerous than, than those who are not believing from the beginning because as a Muslim and then you became a non-Muslim, an ex-Muslim, which is Murtad, you are really dangerous because you know the religion and you are uh, going to affect the people around you and they see it as a betrayal as well for, for, for the society and uh, uh, they don't like them and it's better like um, it's better to be dead and you get they get rid of you and that's what's Murtad under Sharia law and that's what's the punishment of it and I don't think that these people who are um, demonstrating like in Libya a week ago a uh, um, few women went on demonstration asking for implementing of Sharia law in the country and uh, we want to be an Islamic state and so on um, and then and then they come to say Oh, we are no, we are against this and that and so on. If you want to believe in Islamic Sharia, then you have to believe in everything because that's that's the Islamic rules. That's the Islamic Sharia. I am, I don't like talking about fundamentalism. I don't like talking about Islamic rights. Uh, it's it's not my war. For me, I speak against ideology. I speak against Islam. If I am recognized as Islamic phobic, I don't really care because for me, um, I cannot attack Muslims because they, are, they have their own opinion and maybe by the time they will change it, the people need to have the time to change their opinion, to read, to, to, to open more. Maybe the people are, um, uh, if I'm going to attack them now, they're not going to be at the same people later. So when I am speaking, I speak about ideology, and I uh, and I, I have the right to talk about Islam, and I don't uh, see Islam as a religion of peace, and I don't see Islam as a uh, as a um, uh, as a human a human uh, religious that care about the society or care about the culture, or care about the freedom of speech, and. Uh, and that's why I feel that uh, it's very important to to speak about the ideology and the religion, not the not the fundamentalism, because the fundamentalism comes from this religion. It comes from a deep belief. It comes from uh, what they read. It comes from what they are learning. And if we are not fighting what they are learning and what they are believing and we are not going to change it in anything. What's the point of talking about segregation? What's the point of talking about education? What's the point uh, of talking about hijab or whatever when we cannot talk about the, the religion itself? Because this is the religion they are believing they, and it's protected under human rights laws. It's protected. You can you can't say that you cannot do this, you cannot wear that, you cannot so on, you cannot segregate while you Tell them you can believe what you want to believe, and you recognize their religion as a religion, and it's their right. Because if you believe in that, then you have to believe in the rest of the things that they are doing. And thank you very much. Okay.